I say 450 of the best NRL players stuck on the island, but there's going to be some fucking drama. There's going to be some ones. There's going to be some fucking testosterone there. So there's going to be some drama. You're looking at the same blokes every single day. All right, we're back. Episode two. First one was good. About nearly 2K views overnight, which was not bad. So as long as people keep watching, we'll keep punching them out. We've got five topics here today. We've got no idea what the show's called. We've got Jackson in Auckland. What's going on? What's up, bro? And Ice in the office. How are you? Hey, bro. Good, thank you. Let's go. Um, yeah, first topic. We sort of had a chat in the WhatsApp last night. Um, bit of banter. Well, not really banter, but... Paul Vonnie was sitting there last night on Fox League watching Kenty and Ennis go back and forth. Everything around the place was put in place. So spending money. No, not spending See, money. You've got a financial department no, there, Kenty, that they've got to make decisions. You've got to be that, financially responsible, mate. Absolutely. You but, like but, him but because he trust, throws money at no, you. No, I don't, mate. When you're a player and you need I like something, him because he was personable, mate. Jackson, mate, what's your reaction to that sort of content? Oh, I wish I was in her shoes. How cool would that be to sit between those two going at it? But it was um, it was entertaining. Like, Kenty, you know, for say what you want about him, he does make good footy chat, good footy TV. Um, I'm a big Michael Ennis fan. In terms of what they were actually arguing about, I don't think either of them really had a point. It seemed like more just two angry yeah, blokes. I felt having the a same dig. thing. Um, yeah, Michael Ennis, my, I, I could get what Michael Ennis, he's clearly got a personal relationship with Todd Greenberg, so he was taking offence on Todd's behalf to what, Kenny was saying, but uh, I mean, the writing, the writing's been on the wall for Todd Greenberg for a minute, and this is just the reality of being the CEO and taking the big pay packet, like 1.2 million or whatever it is. Again, not his fault, he earned his money, but the reality of that position, that title, that cash, when shit hits a fan like this, you're going to be the, the four buyers. Early. Yeah, so I can get where Kenty, the Kenty, my issue with Kenty is, even when he has a good point, he fucking, he, he shoots himself in the foot with his approach and how he comes at it. He starts having like personal digs at people and it kind of washes away. He had good information there, you know, when yeah. Mick was talking about, oh, the books need to be opened up and Kinty was saying, well, they have been. But he lost that because he just started having a go at, at the individual, at the person. And he's saying, oh, what do you think makes him a good administrator? And Mick's going, mate, I've dealt with him at the dogs. He's you like him because he gives you a hug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, see, that sort of shit. Like, he didn't have to say that, but yeah. yeah good I don't tell know. you that. Was, yeah, it was entertaining. What, what did you reckon, Ice, in terms of like, Obviously, you probably, well, you tend to naturally go with a footy player and these sort of things. So, what did you make of it or the exchange anyway? To be fair, I, I didn't even watch it, eh? I don't oh, normally watch TV. It's your homework, <laughs> watch... right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, boys. But um, what, what, was the, what was the full breakdown? I've got, got the gist of it just then. but Yeah, so yeah. basically, yeah, Ennis breakdown. was saying that um, he's always thought Paul Greenberg was like good to him. Um, and he's got, he's done a lot to the game. And then Kenty was like, what? Because he's throwing money at you because he's doing this, because he's giving you a hug. And, and Bonnie's just sitting there in the middle. And she's just like looking at both of them, just doing these ones. And then the producer's definitely in her ear, just going, just let it go, let it go, let it go. And uh, you yeah, know they what? Click- you- Sorry, so I just cut you off. But do you yeah. know what? Um, like, um, like, even though I've like, publicly said, like, I don't really like Paul Ken and some of the angles that he comes up, I do... Like, I do get his role. Like, I do understand his role within, like, television yeah, and... Um, that's what I was saying, yeah. Uh, like, I, I get it. Like, it, it makes sense. Like, if you had too many people there just sitting around and going, yeah, yeah, this is great. Like, oh, he's my mate too. He's all this. Like, you need a point of difference. And when you watch American sports, he's the point of... Di- like, um, like, they'll go against each other. So, you look at Stephen A. Smith and nice. Max Kellerman. Like, they're always going against each other because they've got different points of view. And that was sort of what it was then. And I know in Australia, we say, like, oh, we come across as haters and... but. Like I get his I get his role within the team. Like he reminds me of that guy that, that plays football that gets off by doing like grubby stuff. Like I'm not gonna name names of anyone in the NRL, but like, like, you, can see, or... <laughs> <laughs> like, like you can see they actually get out a kick out of like doing that stuff that other people they don't want to do. And you need those guys in your team no matter what, no matter what. So a lot of my references come back to sport and, and I understand his role within within sports media. Um he, to be fair, he's made some pretty good points lately, but like you said, his delivery his delivery like it gets in his way sometimes, and the same, same with footy players. Like sometimes they, they lose their head and they start giving away penalties and stupid shit that doesn't necessarily benefit the team. And he's, he's just that guy in TV personality for me. I've always he's rated like, him. Like he's always been on the Matty Johns potty, and he has some good points. But yeah, I think Jackson, you sort of hit the nail on the head that sometimes it can get a bit how you going with the way that he's sort of delivering it. So, but yeah, do you know, that's do you a know what. Um, 
normally sort of sit behind the scenes. He said, but he's actually like a pretty good bloke. Like when you, when you talk to him off camera, he just seemed, he's just like just your average normal bloke. And that's the same back to your footy analogy. Like that guy who's a gronk on the field. He's usually a good bloke when you have a beer with him. So who knows, man? He's doing his job well. Like yeah. um, obviously Fox Sports went up by 9% in terms of viewing last year. So what they're doing is working. Yeah, I was talking to Courtney at um from the Kiwi League show, and she said they've been doing like the Zoom chats like this too, and like their numbers are pretty well. So I think moving forward, it's almost we sort of touched on it yesterday. The with the game being able to operate off a smaller budget, like this type of content hits hard, and people enjoy watching it. I had mad feedback from this yesterday of what we did, so that's why we're doing it again today. Um, punching on to a new topic now, overnight. Um, Jackson, a bit more you than ice in this one. Khabib's put out a little comment on Instagram, pretty much saying that why does the whole world shutting down? How can everyone have this expectation on him being able to fight on the 18th, which is a pretty reasonable comment. I think um, obviously um, Dana White's pretty hard in the paint trying to keep this event going. But <laughs> my view on it is like, just park it and do it. Like nobody's had a proper training camp now. It's not like they're still bringing in people to spar and stuff like that. I think it would be better for the spectacle for it to be postponed. Um, Jackson, what are your thoughts, man? Yeah, this is like, you know what's weird? This is how much of a sports nerd I am. As soon as this whole like global pandemic hit, like, yeah, your first thoughts, your family, your friends, now nah, fuck that. My first thought was like, fuck, are we not going to get Tony and Khabib? Yeah, like, I my tweeted heart it ages ago. Like, I was like, imagine <laughs> yeah. this takes out this fight for the fifth time. Bro, this is the one fight, like the only fight that I actually give a shit about, unless Connor's fighting, this is the only thing I care about ever in fighting. And it's just like, what is this? Is this fifth or It's fourth? the fifth time, fifth time. yeah fifth time that these guys have been scheduled to fight and we're not going to fucking get it it's it's heartbreaking but i mean khabib's he's hamstrung by he's been like painted as the villain like fuck he's not taking the fight or he can't leave russia like there's, yeah. there's travel restrictions on him leaving russia i don't know what people want him to do and tony's coming out obviously he's trying to build the hype so he's saying you know you're gutless you're soft you know you don't want to fight me sort of shit but Unless he fucking gets on a boat and rows himself across to America, I don't really get how he's supposed to fight. So you wouldn't put the, it past him, though. You seen him swimming against the current? <laughs> yeah, I've seen that. I've seen uh, that. <laughs> like a salmon up upstream. Um, but I mean, in terms of like what it does for the fight world, Tony still wants to fight, so you're probably going to get him. I suppose Gaethje probably makes the most sense. I know Masvidal wants him, but Masvidal in an empty arena, it, it seems like they're just, you know, he's such a cash cow for the UFC. I don't know why they'd waste him in an empty arena. Like, just put him on ice until you can get fans back in there. Throw them Gaethje, who's a mad fighter. The purists will love it. No, no don't. It'll ruin the division. Like, what's the point? Like, Gaethje all of a sudden beats him, and then the history between Khabib and Tony is just gone. I think you're always... They can because fight, of the history of that can fight be for a different failing. thing, but I think it ruins it. I think yeah, you need I'll... that fight. Like, that's a massive fight from a martial arts point of view, from a fan's perspective. It's not a Connor fight where you're getting like the person that's not interested in UFC tuning in for it, but you're getting a lot of fringe fans still interested in it from the perspective of it's, it's still going to be a hectic fight. Tony's got on his back. Khabib's a hectic wrestler. I don't know. I just think just park it. Like we need to see this fight and just don't ruin it with a Gaethje. Like Gaethje and Connor should fight. Done. Just move that on. Um, in Ireland, not or fighting in front of no no fans, bro. He's, he's yeah, not no, I know. That's what I mean. Fans. Just everything's in place. Don't upset the apple cart. That's my. So this is the thing, mate. From a business perspective, right? They're in a similar position to the NRL. So the UFC have a nut they have to cover with ESPN. So it's not yeah. like they can just park it and not have events. Like the NRL, you know, they had that April one deadline where the broadcast money was coming. That's the only reason they kept the boys out there playing. It wasn't for the good of the game and the great game, which is the worst fucking slogan of all time, but. It wasn't for the purest fans and for the players. It was because they needed to make April 1 where the broadcast money came back in, right? The UFC is in a similar position with ESPN. They're saying, mate, we need X amount of events a year. And yeah. if you can't deliver on it, then you don't get paid. So anyway, we'll go to a part-time fan for their perspective. Um, yeah. What do you reckon? Nice. You like casually uh, going like, to the pub when it's on? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I do. I like, I do like, one thing I do love about the UFC, it makes the storytelling from the back end is really, really good. So you only have to watch a five minute promo and you feel like you know the blokes, you know what I mean? That's how good of execution they are from a marketing standpoint. And I, I, read, his, um, I read his caption, it does make sense. Like, why do we treat sports players like any different? 
like insane that we're yeah. about to touch on NRL and I'm thinking, fuck yeah, send these boys away. So <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, that's what I'm thinking. But then like, yeah, I don't know. Like he makes a good point when the whole world's in panic, when the biggest businesses in the world are panicking and you want to send this bloke off to have a fight. Like it doesn't make sense, but not like you said, as a sports fan and as a casual UFC fighter, you still want to see it happen because I do love stories. Yeah. We'll see how this one all ends up. Yeah, you touched on it, Ice. NRL Island. It could be on. What are your thoughts? Being a player, if you were locked in a same little complex, little somewhere in the, what is it, Queensland they want to do it? Um, yeah, Queensland. How would that all go down? Would the, obviously, from a content a perspective, it would be hectic. But from like all the boys, 16 or 15, however many teams there are in the one joint, what's that look like? You almost fucking turn it into a reality TV show from a That's content I mean. standpoint. Nail on the head, yeah. Fox, yeah, get um, it. Had, had Den and Kemp on the other day, and, like, obviously, they had, like, um, we sort of talked about it, but the way it's sort of structured, like, they build out six uh, training fields, all the boys stay in this one place, they jump on these boats and go to Suncorp, they go to um, Gold Coast, and they go to Red Cliff Stadium. It's, it's the best alternative for it. And, like, from, like I said, I talked about storytelling from before. You can build the fucking best fucking show off the back of it. Imagine... imagine Imagine, I don't know how many players there are in NRL, say 450 of the best NRL players stuck on the island, but there's going to be some fucking drama. There's going to be some ones, there's going to be some fucking testosterone there. So there's going to be some drama. You're looking at the same blokes every single day. It's hard enough looking at your same teammates, maybe it's in the whole NRL. So in terms of, you could actually build a fucking sick show off the back of it. Like you follow the, you follow each team around for a week, Fox, Fox or whoever's, whoever's got the uh, marketing budget for it needs to get right behind it and build content for it. But like we sort of touched on from a human aspect, <laughs> do we treat sports players a little bit differently because they get paid a little bit different? I don't know. Like as a human, you don't want it. But as a sportsman and a content creator, even though I got brush from Jordan Kahu, uh, <laughs> you, 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 you could see you could see the you could see the copious amounts of uh, content. Just throw me and Denon on the island with him and give us a fucking vlog camera and podcast studio. Oh, I can flip this can flip this can on baby all on on supply. Yeah, oh, mate, he'd be in his element over there, wouldn't he? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, I tell I you what, I tell you what, the showers are beginning to run with all the boys stuck on the island. <laughs> 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 Oi, get out of the shower, fuck you! Yeah. yeah, I don't know. From a like, I didn't even think about it because that's not where my brain goes in terms of a show. But it's a fucking good point. Um, imagine like uh, a survivor. But imagine a survivor. Someone gets like a coronavirus, tested positive. Fuck, sorry, man. The tribe spoken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except then everyone's not going to be wanting to use the forks and the bloody missile. Yeah. Or I, I, look, I have no idea how it's going to go. Um, this the weird thing about this. Whether whether it goes ahead or doesn't go ahead, or there's football resumes up in Townsville or whatever the fuck they do, there's going to be an asterisk next to this season because it's no longer about footy. Like. At the start of every year, you feel like it's being billed as, you know, can the Roosters three-peat? Is the Melbourne dynasty over? You know, the Warriors going to come from nowhere and win it. Um, <laughs> that's like... <laughs> yeah, the no, bro, that's just you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, but now it's like, it, it's going to be similar to the Raptors winning a chip without Durant. They're like, whoever wins this comp, if they have a comp, whether it's on an island or wherever, it's not going to feel like, I don't know, from a fan's perspective, like, obviously, my life's goal is to see the Warriors hoist the bloody trophy if they win they won't but if they were to win this one on some island in the middle of a shortened season and you know amidst a global pandemic in an empty stadium it'd feel fucking weird so i'm it sounds bizarre because i love footy and i'm a journalist but i don't really want to see it return unless it's exactly, staff writer yeah <laughs> unless it's it's complete form if that makes sense um look it's a cool story you know sending the boys off to an island ferrying them in and there'll be punch-ons in hotel rooms and there'll be a hell of a lot of negative news coverage to come out of it as well, I'm sure. But look, I just, I'm not one for play by all, you know, at any means necessary. I, I think if you can resume normal play, sweet, let's hit it. Um, Super Rugby can do it differently because they have conferences. So like the New Zealand conference can do their own thing here. Aussie can do their own thing there and they wouldn't get fans anyway. So it doesn't matter about the stadiums. But Ooh. like, hey, 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 watch out those <laughs> Super Rugby fans in the comments, man. Wow. They'll get you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's yeah, move right. it on from, from sport. No, no, actually, sorry, sorry yeah. one more. Just uh, We touched on it yesterday with Normie. So I reckon the likely presumption of this was brushed out Ireland and probably start a competition in the start of September um, yeah. and then roll that through to December. And I was like, but from a fan, it's better be mad. Imagine getting up on the hill. It's, but you're rolling into daylight savings for one. So yeah. all, all the games, and like Normie's like, oh, it's all right for you. Like, we'll be out there sweating. And I was like, well, would you rather be playing a season or would you rather be doing an off season? 
And yeah. it's, oh, yeah, I'd rather be doing that. Imagine playing Saturday night, Sunday, you're at Coogee. Like, yeah. It's summer. It's, Here it's we fucking go. summer in Sydney. Especially what off the back of like bushfires and all the sort of stuff that's happened. We haven't really had a summer here. So yeah, fucking, yeah. if you roll a footy season into that, imagine Origin and it's still daylight savings. You can, you can play dry, like dry football. Yeah. Like that just makes the game yeah, a little the, bit better. Yeah. What yeah. about, so, sorry, Luki, sorry to jump nah. in, Luki. What about, mate, in terms of... No structure um, of this. I saw, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, saw a, um, I saw an article today. What about, like, my, my mind with this sort of shit always goes to play welfare. So say they start in September, which would be dope, and they go all the way through, to, I think, like, grand finals, like, 24th of, like, Christmas Eve or some shit, which would be sick as well. But what does that then do for the guys who play... They play right up until that time, and then what? You've got to have your eight weeks off or whatever it is. No, no, no. That, that's just got to get brushed. All the boys just got to realise, fuck it. Like, this is the scenario that we're in. Fucking, like, yeah. take it or leave it. Like, you have, have three, four weeks off, and then you've got four weeks, and you're back into the season again in March. Yeah. If you, especially if you for think... the boys who sign new teams, like Frizz and that, or Jai Arrow, or anyone who's with a new team. Because if they were to have eight weeks off, they'd rock up to you know, half a week of preseason and then round one. So they'd have to, because that's all in their contracts. That's all in the CBA and all that, the eight weeks. Yeah, so. but yeah, but that, that's just got to be null and, vo- null and void pretty much this season, I reckon. Like, right. if I hit, like, do you guys want to go back to the scenario again? Like, stuff like that. But if you think about it, uh, and one of, the, one of the other good points that um, Denon brought up yesterday, if we move that competition to September, it's probably we're going to be the first time that everyone's got a full roster ready to go, like, and off mm. the bat, like, round three. Like, um, even Fozzie uh, yesterday, like, I just started listening to the scope. Like, Fozzie could come back and Fozzie be back, yeah. Jaden Braley just done his ACL round two, he'd probably be back as well. Cameron King is another one that done his ACL. Like, there's some silver linings in with it as well. But, like, in terms of, um, Nate Roach, Roach, yeah, like that poor bloke as well. But in terms of, like, they'd have three weeks off, four weeks off, and then you, you train for a couple of weeks and you go straight back into maybe one trial. And then mm. round one. But the thing is, they wouldn't lose too much match, match fitness. So you hear always, always hear the boys yeah, go, Fuck, I'm blown to round three. They won't have that. So you might get round one next year that's just fucking polished comp, just, just goes bang, bang, bang. But then on the flip side, someone gets injured in the semifinals and you potentially miss that whole season. You don't have the preseason and off season to recover. So it squeezes everything up, but it's just, it's just going to be have to play off the card you doubt, I reckon. Yeah, right. All right, we'll wrap it up with um, Jackson, mate. You're pretty cut that Joe Exotic doesn't sing his own music. I haven't seen it. Oh. Ice, have you watched that doco yet? Oh. Uh, I, watched, um, I watched one random episode. It was episode four, and he was actually singing in it. And it was the only episode of singing. Uh, and I, I heard the song, and then he was singing it in the car. And I was going, fuck, this, this doesn't sound right. And <laughs> it was funny that I brought that up, and you guys are bringing this up. But Jackson, you're probably the guy to probably I haven't even seen it. speak on this. Oh, I don't know what you guys are doing with your lives, man. I, I, it's, it's lockdown. What else are you watching? Seriously. Fucking making watching content. Yeah, loads yeah, of ball man. videos and shit. Uh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's heartbreaking, mate. Hoz, me and Hoz have been on this Joe Exotic train for a minute now. Um, I see a bunch of people putting his songs to like Benji highlights and that. It's, it, it, go, it hits different. But yeah, it breaks your heart. It's one of those things like I was saying, saying to Luki before, Ice. It's like, you know when you like everyone was like mad into making a murderer and that? Or yep. like those, any of those big docs. And then after the fact, when people start doing even like a little bit of digging, you start to realize how fucking one-sided documentaries are and how they paint a certain narrative. Bro, this oh. guy is like, he's painted as like, you almost feel sorry for him. Like he's clearly abusing all these animals and like a drug addict. And he's got like naked boyfriends, husbands that aren't gay. Like one of them, you know, spoiler alert, one of them kills himself. It's like, it's a horrible dark story. He goes to jail for trying to hire a hitman to knock off this Peter girl. But, it's like you still end up feeling sorry for him. And then when you actually like sit back and you kind of read the facts of it, then you find out he doesn't sing his own music. Oh, but like mm. that, he's such a sack of shit. And the whole world, he's asking for like presidential pardons and that. And there's all these petitions trying to get him out of jail and money being raised and women throwing themselves at him, even though he's gay. But it's like this, this whole thing for me, the most interesting thing is how influential a powerful documentary like that with a bit of you know marketing spin behind it like netflix has fuck it can sway an entire opinion like i found myself feeling sorry for this absolute sack of shit yeah um editing and edit like i obviously i've made a fuckload of vlogs and like if you can edit you can sort of manipulate the story very very well like it's not it's not hard to do it so i can understand that the only have to look at a, like a netflix show like game changers fuck i want to say i like, fuck i need to be vegan i went vegan oh, for two oh. weeks so <laughs> yeah and then yeah, you ate more it's, meat it's, than you ever had in your entire life <laughs> yeah and then fucking i'm gonna need to get back on that actually fucking feeling shit at the moment there's yeah, nothing yeah, in the fridge last night i had a steak and a beef patty like we used to do at the cafe 
Yeah, good times. Feeling fresh this morning. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. But yeah, like like you said, uh, fuck, storytelling is super important, and that I I haven't watched that show, but yeah, it doesn't really appeal to me to be honest. Yeah, I'll watch it. Maybe like I've got nothing else to watch. I um, he lives in New Zealand. He can only watch fucking Shortland Street and shit. Like <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about controlling a controlling a narrative with editing, mate. You made you made this bloke over here look like a model fucking employee. I'll tell you what, uh, no, nah, you said take the piss I out of. I made him look awkward as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good job. Hey, uh, it's, funny, can... it's funny. You, sorry, it's funny you bring up that point about um, girls throwing themselves at him in jail. That's actually a thing. Like, girls actually love boys. We know. I know. Yeah. I might fuck around and get myself arrested. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, you know what girls are like. Just want to lock you up at home. That's why. That's where the girl is. They love a lot. Yeah. yeah. All right. I reckon we wrap it up for today. Any thoughts on a name while we're here? For the show. Uh, just call got, it the show. I got one. Yeah, uh, the show and go. The uh, show and go. Yeah, I'm too yeah, show and go. I reckon that works. Mm. Well, if you if you shave your moustache, we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> you look like nothing else like, to do. You huh? look like Matthew Gallagher Dover if he never made the NBA, son. Oh, mate, <laughs> you've seen me on the court, man. I've I've got you covered. <laughs> Sweet boys. Yeah. All right, All see right, you, boys. See you later.